Hey guys, welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. We have another exciting group of fabric coming out with Island Batiks, so let's get started. Yay! All right, so I hope you enjoyed our first collection with Island Batiks called Woodcut Blossoms. I believe some of it is still available on our website, but we are now ready to unveil our second collection. This one is called Chickadee. It is bright, it is fun, and it is happy, and we've got lots of projects that we've done with this. So let me go through the collection with you, and then I'll share the projects. So with this line, we're dealing with a lot of bright primary colors. Uh, you're dealing with uh, very blue, tur turquoisey blues, and cheddary yellows, and yummy reds. Um, so unlike the first one, which was very quiet with the purples and blues, this one is bright and a delight. So let's go through the different prints and col colors in the group. First off, we have the swirl pattern, and that uh, comes in three colors. It's the really bright, I like kind of think of it as a Caribbean blue. I love this because it really works as a solid in a lot of projects, but because of the tonal print, it has a lot of movement. So we have that one and it came in the blue. All my fabrics are falling. And it came in the green, the really limey, yummy, yellowy green. And then it came in the really warm cheddar yellow. So three swirls. Next up, we have the focal prints of the group. I'm gonna kind of tilt these this way, so. Sheesh. Okay, here we go. So let's go over the focal. I mean, obviously this is called chickadee for a reason. So we've got our, well, I guess they're very majestic roosters on you got the yellowy orange roosters on the reddish orange background so this is really kind of the the one i used for several borders and i used it when i wanted to have a lot of color otherwise the group itself each print is very tonal so this is one that brings in a little bit of a mix then we offer the same chickens sorry roosters in a brick red this is probably one of my favorite yummy reds so we've got those then we've got the Tossed Vine in a royal blue. This one is the only color this print comes in. Again, with the uh, value contrast between the light and the dark, it's a great piece to create some movement. Even though everything is very tonal, it's got enough contrast that it can kind of work as like a two color fabric and add some movement to the quilts. So there's the fields. Then, well, the roosters have to have a place to stay. So they are staying in the barn with the fences. Um, this is really, really fun to use because it's tonal. And if you cut it up into smaller pieces, you can't tell they're barns, but yet you can still use it as a barn print if you want one in your fabrics. Next up, we have the grass. This gives you some movement in the print. Um, it is a tonal greens from dark green to a very, very light yellow. So it does add, again, a contrast in your print so they don't all look flat and solid. Next up is the wood grain. Um, and I'll show you, we use this as sashing in one of our projects. It was really, really fun to use. Um, and it's a really nice, rich royal blue that brings in some dark uh, contrast to the other prints. And of course, you can't have a chicken line without chicken wire. And so this one is just a really light blue chicken wire on a dark blue background. Again, this is, gives you like a medium print feel. It gives you some texture uh, and can add some more movement to your blocks. And then we have the dots. I think I call these ring dots, is what I call them. And these yummy guys come in quite a few colors. Well, three colors. We have the orange to cheddar yellow. We have what I like to call the Caribbean blue. And then we have the Royal. So these are your small prints in the collection. Um, there is enough contrast that they, they don't read as a solid, they do read as a print, and that's where I would use these in different projects. But I also like that they're very whimsical and generic in their print. They don't have to be in a chicken quill. And when you see our projects, you'll see, you know, we didn't go totally to the farm for these. Um, and you'll get to see how we use these prints in there. So those are them. 
Next up is the speckles. The speckles do come in several colors. First up, we have a tomatoey red compared to the brick red earlier. This is a, a lighter red, so it's a nice one when you're mixing and you want more value in different reds in a print or in a project. Then we have the lime green speckle. And then we have the green speckle. Let's see if you can get all these on camera here. There we go. Next up is the orange. And this is a nice uh, burnt orange color, not a lot of yellow in it. And then we have our pale blue, or our light blue. So we've got one, two, three, four, five speckle colors. Again, this is one that I use these for backgrounds. I use these for borders. I use these for accents. Um, they are very versatile and they work in a lot of different ways. So I do like having all these speckly colors in my line. And the last print is one of my favorite. I saved the best for last. Um, it's little looks like an Ohio star block with a heart and sashing. So it kind of looks like its own little farm quilt. And this comes in the royal blue with sky blue. And then it's a little more subtle in the red. So you can really have it in your face with the blue and then quieter with the red. So these are all the fabrics in the Chickadee collection. Now let's run through the projects. Okay, so now let's go over the yummy projects that we did with the chickadee collection um matthew and i both designed a few projects for this one and it was a blast to use and you'll also see in one of them where we added some more colors to truly create a rainbow effect with the collection so first up is this pattern called bell epoch it is designed by matthew and it is an art deco dragonfly featuring the collection uh, there are no additional fabrics added to it those are all just chickadee colors it measures 50 by 37 so it's a very nice wall hanging look beautiful over a couch or on a wall in your sewing room and it is applique uh, we did use the chickens the tonal chickens as the background on it you'll see there you can see that it's just a tonal background but it's actually chickens when you look close um, and that's kind of our nod to the collection uh, next up is Lucky Stars. This one is comes in two colorways. We pulled all of the cool colors out of the collection to create one colorway and all of the warm colors to do the second colorway. Um, I am using a basic from Island Batiks for the backgrounds on these so that these the collection itself is a very mid-range value collection and I wanted to have some contrast with light and dark. Um, so we did pull in those basics for the backgrounds. With the warm colors, we used a ice gray, and then the blue one, we obviously just went with a lighter blue. And these are 70 by 89 and a half. Next one is Pop of Color. This one is 50 by 60 inches. It is also an applique quilt, and this is a great one to show the full range of the colors in this line. Plus, we added in several other uh, tones of yellow, and I believe we added in some orange and another red, as well as mixing in purple into the collection to add another pop to it. But it was a way to show that when you add just a few more colors, it can become a very rainbowy quilt. Um, and I love this quilt. It is very, very fun to make. The next one up is Rippling Waves. This is a pattern and I've taught this as a class. This is the class I teach for beginner curves. So if you've never sewn a curve, this is the pattern to start with. And people love the workshop. I have yet to have someone not be able to sew a curve after that workshop. I show you a sneaky, easy trick to do it. Um, and we recolored it from the top tropical prints the original quilt was designed with to the chickadee prints you see here. So it still has a very bright and happy feel to it. Um, but yet it kind of has more of a modern feel to it, the way the curves and the triangles all work together. So, and then the last project we did at this point is Breakout. This is a very old pattern of mine from when I first started designing. Um, I wanted, I had this idea of what a little chicks look like as they break out of their shells and I sketched out all the different chicks as they're doing that. And when I got, um, when I started 
designing the projects with this line in mind, that one came up. And this is the one where I used the wood grain. I had said earlier as the sashing. I actually used it as the background behind the chickens as they're breaking out of their shells. This is also a very fun and easy applique. Uh, and it measures 38 by 48. So it's perfect for a kid's quilt. It's perfect for a wall hanging. You could very easily add more chickens to make it bigger. But it was a very, very fun quilt, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we will have kits for some of these available on the website, as well as the Aurafil thread kit I mentioned, um, and yardage. Plus, we will be doing, uh, we will have 10 inch pre cuts for it. Uh, the other thing we have planned for this group is we're going to be doing another blog hop with some of our great designer partners out there, other quilt designers. And this round, I gave them the challenge of designing a layer cake or a 10 inch square quilt. Uh, these are going to be their own paid patterns, but I wanted to show you lots of different ways that you could use 10 inch square pre-cuts. Cause I don't know about you, I've got lots of them, not only for this group, for many others. And I thought it would be a really fun challenge to tell everybody, okay, this is what we're using let's make a project. So I hope you will follow along, watch us here on YouTube, as well as go over to the whimsicalworkshop.com where you can follow us on Instagram and YouTube and our blog so you can get all the details as well as sign up for our email newsletter where I send out the information as it comes available. So I hope you've enjoyed the unveiling of my second collection from Island Batiks. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Um, and if you have any questions about any of the things I covered in the video, just leave that below as well. I do check those. And I want to thank you for tuning in and we will see you next time. So make sure you like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later.